It's another great day, another beautiful day, a day that the Lord has made. I welcome you to our Lives Journey series, a place where God illuminates us, directs us, guides us, reproves and gives instruction for our journey ahead. And I pray God that as the Lord has brought us to this season of this year, I believe God that you will bring us to the end of it absolutely, completely, and that we will enter into the new year with in health, in joy, in gladness. I believe, God, that, that your life will be a testament and a proof of God's faithfulness. It's another beautiful time, another gracious and wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. The Lord, out of the goodness of his heart, has guaranteed our life, our lives and our health and our peace and our joy. It's indeed a testimony to see for the eyes to behold the sun and for us to enjoy all of the beauty and to bask in the glory of the Lord. It's another exciting time in God's presence and I believe God that today we will go on the eagle's wings to come to our wealthy place, that the Lord will carry us to that lofty height, that transcendental place of greatness, of joy, of gladness, where we will live and enjoy the presence and the power of the Lord. I welcome you once again and I'm glad that you're part of this journey. And I pray God that your part will not be missing when the rewarder our righteous judge shall appear to give to every man according to his work in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going on to still our month of hope, hope, hopefulness. This is our month of hope. We are believing God that this month God will give all of us that illumination, that enlightenment, that understanding to, help, to break the barriers that hinders us from entering into our promised land. I pray God that you will enter into that glorious and lofty place that God has promised you as we hold on tenaciously by faith, true hope and hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Before we go into today's message, I'd like us to pray and ask God for direction and ask, to ask that the Holy Spirit will lead us and will submit all to Him as we humbly bow before Him who is the Creator of heaven and earth and our Maker. Father, we thank You for another gracious and glorious time in your presence. We thank you because you are merciful and you are kind. We thank you because you've done all things well. We thank you because your word is forever settled in heaven. We thank you because it was last week that we gathered. And Lord, you have guaranteed our existence till now by your grace, by keeping your breath in us, and by guaranteeing our lives by your spirit. We pray, Lord, that even as you have kept us thus far in this year, we shall see the end of this year in health, in wealth, in peace, and in joy. We will enter into the new year in full of vigor and strength, refreshed and rejuvenated by your Spirit. We pray that your name will be glorified, and your word will be magnified, and your presence will be manifest, and your name will be exalted. We thank you for your mighty word and what you are said to do today. We thank you for what you have already begun, and we pray that your hand will rest upon us all the days of our lives, that like Elijah ran and outran the chariot, our destinies will outrun, O oh God, the machinations of men, and will come to our place in life that you have ordained for us. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you because your Son, Jesus Christ, will be glorified today. And we pray, God, that your mighty hand will bring us to our wealthy place and give us rest and peace all the days of our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' blessed name, we have prayed. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. I remember last week, I uh, we started this month of hope on a platform of hope. And the power, the message was the, the power of tomorrow. How that tomorrow is the determinant of our lives. However, the only way for us to see what we desire tomorrow is by what we do today. Otherwise, we will arrive at tomorrow and tomorrow will become will be like today if we do not in if we have not prepared for tomorrow today. So we prepare for tomorrow today in order for us to arrive at tomorrow ready to achieve and to possess that which we have prepared for today. And so to, to today by the grace of God we're still going on uh, in our month of hope. And today's message is tagged how to own your tomorrow. How to own your tomorrow? How do you possess tomorrow? You know, I know that you know some bold 
you know, the book of in Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus said, uh, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He said, Don't worry about tomorrow, but let tomorrow take care of itself. He did tell us not to worry, not to be anxious about tomorrow, but he didn't say not to plan for tomorrow. So there's a difference between worrying about tomorrow and there is a difference between planning for tomorrow. And Jesus will never tell us not to plan for tomorrow because he's the one who also said, if a man wants to build a house, will he not for sit down to count the cost of what it will be? Talking about a futuristic uh, intention. And so if Jesus said that, it, it, it tells us that planning for tomorrow is important. However, worrying about tomorrow is useless. So let us plan for tomorrow. Let us believe God for tomorrow, but not worry about tomorrow. And one of the processes of entering into our tomorrow in our glorified state is by, by the grace of God we'll be looking at today. And that ends the topic, how to own your tomorrow. You know, it's always the fear. People live in, there's this constant anxiety about the unknown. People are afraid about tomorrow. People are scared about the future. Many people don't even want to think about the future. They just want to see the future appear. People just live life on a daily basis, you know. Uh, but the power of purpose and the power of reason tells us that unless we plan for tomorrow, unless we plan for that which we hope to see tomorrow, then the possibility of seeing our expectations becomes elusive because we have not prepared for it. No man goes to war. I think it was Sun Tzu, Sun Tzu the man who wrote The Art of War, who said, if you know yourself and you know your enemy, your victory is guaranteed. So if you understand your today and plan for to your tomorrow, then your destiny will arrive at its glorious end. I pray God that your future will not be disarrayed nor emasculated. We need, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray God that we will arrive at our glorious end by the power of God in the mighty name of Jesus. So today, how to own tomorrow? How do you own your tomorrow? You know, you're, you're working hard, you're putting aside your resources, you're putting aside, you're planning, you're projecting, you're strategizing, you're, you're, you're becoming a technician, you know, a tactician because you're looking at the strategies. However, there is a vital key that all encapsulates everything that you're doing. If, if you like, it is the over, 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 overwhelming arch that you need as a covering for all of your labor, your work, your effort, your sweat, that makes sure that all of those things that you've put in place, your planning, does not go to waste. There's one fundamental key, and I pray God that today, as the Holy Spirit unveils the, the keys, the mysteries. You know, the Bible said, Jesus speaking to the disciples said, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, these things are in parable, lest when they hear, they will understand, and then they will repent and be saved. But these things are, are shrouded in mysteries to the world. They are simple but yet powerful because they are the determinant of our destiny and how to possess your tomorrow how to own your tomorrow hinges on the proclamation of your faith simple isn't it but powerful the way to possess our tomorrow is by the profession of our mouth and by the grace of god we're looking at our in scripture how that people have shattered their destinies simply because they've not adapted or adopted the right attitude and the right conception of how tomorrow is to be by the profession of their mouth. It sounds so simple. If I put them in the scale of, of the things you need to do to make your tomorrow successful, I'm sure your tongue or your profession will be the least thing that you mention. You say to me, we'll plan, we'll put aside our resources, we will make the necessary connections, we will strategize, we will put you know xyz in place however we will omit i tell you 90 percent of the time we will omit the fact that our tongue and our words and our professions and our proclamations are necessary for us to achieve in all of our efforts and all of our desires <clears throat> so crucial because everything that you ever see in your tomorrow 
hinges on your capacity to bring them into existence by the vocalization or by the proclamation or by the profession of your mouth. So your tongue plays a vital role. Your tongue is a vital key to your destiny. Your tomorrow becomes elusive until you understand that your tongue is the creator of your tomorrow. Your tongue will either prepare you or make your tomorrow great or make it or mar your tomorrow. I pray God that the Lord will circumcise and touch your tongue with a coal of fire so that your destiny will arrive and you will, you will see all of the labors and effort that you have put in place come into fruition by the proclamation of your words. You know why words are important? Because words don't die. Why words are important? Because words were the, okay, the original orchestration of the world. Remember in Genesis, the Bible said, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God speak light into existence before God saw light. And all of the things we see in this world hinges on that fundamental fact that words are creators of destinies. Because everything came by virtue of the spoken word. He says, and we know that all things were created by God. And the way that God created them was by speaking them. He said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And when God finished, he said, let there be water. Let there be firmament. Let there be herbs. Let there be trees. Let there be all that God wanted. He spake into existence. And therefore, as he spake them, he saw them, which, proof, which means a futuristic event. He, saw, he, he spake them, then he saw them. Until he spake them, he never saw them. Because the Bible says, in the beginning, the earth was void, void and without form. And the Spirit of God over, the, over it. And then it, it was dark and gloomy and, and, uh, you know, uh, and, and, and full of blackness and darkness and and, and undesirable. But when the Spirit of the Lord began to over around it, the Bible said, I believe that God was looking at the most habitable place to put man and to, to, to put his creation. So he must have journeyed through the space, the stellar space, and gone through this. You know what we as man or as scientists have come to tag as the planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Venus, Uranus, and all of them. But God must have gone through all of the space that he has created and then looked at earth and said, yeah, I think I'm going to put situate man here. And then God said, all right, this is what I want to see. I want light. I want water. I want soil. I want plants. And then I want man. So you see that God put in place, all the things that God put in place came as a result of God speaking them into existence. The tomorrow of the earth that God imagined, God saw by speaking them into existence and if you are to see your tomorrow if your tomorrow is to be what the why and what the weight and what the effort then when you combine the work of your hand with the fruit of your mouth your success becomes inevitable the bible says in proverbs chapter 12 verse 14 it says a man's hand a man's belly shall be a man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth a man shall be satisfied, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. It's not talking about the fruit you eat. It's talking about the words which are the fruits of your mouth. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. That is the labor of your hand that you have labored all your life for your tomorrow can only come to fruition by the rightful use of your mouth. He says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with good. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of a man's hand. That is your labor, your time, your effort, your skills, your, all of your labor for your tomorrow can only come to fruition by the fruit of your mouth. So when you labor with your hand, your mouth must be in consonance with your labor in order for you to see the fruit of your labor. You can destroy the work of your hand by the fruit of your mouth. 
I pray God that that will not be your portion. He says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and the recompense of a man's hand, your labor, shall be rendered unto him by the words of his mouth. And then when you go further down in verse 18, uh, chapter, uh, in, in, in Proverbs 18, verse 16, he says that uh, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. As a matter of fact, verse 17 first talked about, it says same thing as in verse 12, as in Proverbs 12. It says in verse 17, it says that the, the, the a man's mouth, a man's belly shall be satisfied, almost verbatim, a man's belly shall be satisfied by the, by the fruit of his mouth and the increase, and he shall see the increase by the fruit of his lips. A man's belly shall be satisfied by the with the fruit of his mouth by the fruit of his mouth and the increase of his feet and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled and the amplified version says that it says a man shall receive the consequences of his words a man shall receive the consequences of his words and verse 18 then said death and life they who understand the concept of how that tomorrow can be achievable accomplishable and attainable understand that their mouth and their tongue plays a vital role in the success of your destiny your tongue is so powerful for you in order you know as an instrument of possession and when you understand how it works it becomes a tool of joy it's a day that love it death and life is in the power of the tongue you can either create your tomorrow or you can destroy your tomorrow I pray God that your life will be a testament of those who have used their tongue and their mouth to create their glorious tomorrow. You know, he says, death and life is in the power of the tongue and they that know it shall eat the fruit thereof. They that love it, they who love the use of their tongue will either eat the consequences, he says, will eat the consequences of our words, whether for good or for bad. Can you imagine laboring all your life only to arrive at tomorrow and have nothing prepared simply because your mouth has destroyed your destiny. Your tongue is the most vital, one of the most vital instrument of your destiny and it is important that you circumcise them in achieving your glorious tomorrow. Remember what the Bible says in um, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah said, I he says, on the, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple and above him were the seraphims and with twin they covered their face and with twin they covered their feet and with twin they did fly. And one cried to another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty for the earth is full of thy glory. And the first thing that Isaiah said to himself to God hearing was, woe is me because I am undone. And I'm a man of unclean lips. Did you see that? He understood the power of his lips and the power of his tongue. And he said, woe is me because I'm a man of unclean lips. And I dwell among a people of unclean tongue and of unclean lips. And the first thing that God did in order to prepare that man's future and his destiny, he says, and the, <clears throat> he said, and the seraphim flew to the altar and took a coal of fire with a tongue. And he, pushed, and he touched my tongue with a coal of fire. And he said, your tongue has been purged and your, and from its iniquity and your, your lips have been cleansed. So you see that the first thing God did in preparing Isaiah for his destiny was that he cleansed his tongue and his mouth and his, and his tongue because it was vital for him to understand in order for him to achieve his glorious destiny, his tongue was a... Uh, a fundamental key for success. And so God said, the first thing the seraphim did was went to the altar, picked a coal, a life coal with a tongue from the altar and then purged his tongue. And he said, your sins are purged and your iniquities are forgiven. The Lord cleansed him first by cleansing his tongue. And when God cleansed his tongue, then his future became glorious. I pray God that your tongue will be circumcised with that coal of fire that the angel of God will come and touch your tongue with a coal of fire and purify your destiny for, a, for your tongue for a glorious destiny. That you also 
will begin to create a constructive destiny for yourself. That you begin to own your tomorrow because you have spoken your tomorrow into existence. You know, it says, speak the word only. You know, when Jesus, the elders of the church came to Jesus and they spoke on behalf of the centurion and the centurion and Jesus said, oh, no problem. Let's go see him. And as they began to go, the centurion saw Jesus afar off and came to him and said, you're not worthy. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. He says, I am a man of authority and I understand the power of the spoken word. I understand that words are spoken to create effect in the future. I understand that words travel into the future to to begin to create what we imagine and what we intend. And our words are critical factors for success in achieving a glorious tomorrow. He says, speak the word only. And Jesus said, I haven't seen any, I haven't seen such great faith in Israel. No, not, not in the whole of Israel. Because that man understood that there is power, there is authority in our words, and our words can either determine our future by making it glorious or making it, you know, otherwise. And I pray God that your destiny and your tomorrow will be, will be, will capture greatness because you have spoken them into existence. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. A man's mouth is the key to the satisfaction of his future. Your tongue is vital for your destiny. You can therefore not mess around with your tongue. You need to circumcise it by the power of the Holy Spirit, just like he did to Isaiah when he took the coal and cleansed his tongue for him to speak right words. Job said in Job chapter 6 and verse 12 or verse 10, he said, How forcible! Are right words. I think Job 6 verse 6. How forcible are right words. How forcible. That means that there is force to project our future to become a glorious future. How forcible are right words. I pray God that your positive prof profession, your confession of faith will become a glorious and an amazing thing in creating your future. David said, they believe, therefore they, therefore they speak. We also believe, and therefore we speak. They believe, therefore they speak. We also believe. You see, your words are the confirmation of your faith. Your words are the confirmation of your faith. What you believe speaks to the words that comes out of you. And that is, the, is what stamps your destiny to determine whether you have faith or not. You know, he said, the Bible says in Romans 10, he says, uh, he says, if you come, he says, with a heart, with a heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto righteousness. It is your mouth that brings you into that place of righteousness. It's the confession of your mouth that brings you salvation. It's the confession of your mouth that gives you possession of the land. It is the confession of your mouth that determines your faith. There are spirits, you know, we, we operate because we know that the spiritual realm organizes and determines the physical realm. And therefore, the words we speak either encourages the positive supernatural or the negative supernatural. So that's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, he said, don't say before an angel that it was an error. He said, when you go to the house of God, be ready to listen than to give the offering of fools. When thou hast vowed a vow, be ready to pay it and, and, to, and, 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 and not defy it. And don't say before an angel that it was an error. Don't, don't proclaim your what you don't intend because angels are acting on the behalf of the things we say. The words we say either propel them or incapacitates them. And therefore, I pray that you begin to speak rightful words to your future. You begin to speak rightful words into your destiny. That your words will begin to encapsulate what tomorrow should be. That your word will begin to decorate your future and what you expect it to be. Because angels are around us and they pick the things we say. He said, never say before an angel that it was an error lest God destroys, lest he destroys the work of your hands. The angels of God are always around us. They are with us and they are with us. They are always with us. They are by us and they are around us. And I pray God 
that your words will begin to be words of life, words of strength, words of wisdom, words that will be creative to create a tomorrow in order for you to possess your tomorrow in the mighty name of Jesus. And the way to do that is by projecting that tomorrow today through your words. James put it so very vividly in James chapter 3 from verse 1. He put it so extremely that we may understand how powerful and how, how important our tongues are in the fulfilling of our destiny. He says in from verse 1, James chapter 3 verse 1, He said, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that ye shall receive the greater condemnation. He says, In all things we offend in all, but if any man offend not in words, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle his own body. He said, We put beads in horses' mouth, verse 2, that it may turn their body uh, where, we will, where we wish or where we will. And so he says, And the sheep also, he says, Though they are great and they are put driven about with, with fierce winds, and yet they are turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listed. And he says, So is the tongue, even so is the tongue a little member and boasted of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You know, someone uh, can set the whole nation ablaze by the words of their mouth. He said, Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. You know those guys who commit arson? There was a time that the forest in California, one of the forests in California, uh, burned for a long time, for over a week, because someone had set fire to the place. A little fire consumed the whole forest. And that's what James was saying. He said, Behold how great a matter, a little, behold how great a matter, a little fire kindleth. That a little talk, a little word, a little word of negativity, of, un, of, of failure, a little word of, of, of faithlessness can deter and derail the destinies of men. And that can, our words can either make or mar our future. You know, imagine a little fire becoming a conflagration and then burning down a whole city and turning a whole nation into this, you know, in upside down. My prayer is that your future will be guaranteed. He says, so is the tongue among our members and boasted it of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. He says, the tongue is a fire and a world of iniquity, verse 4. Uh, and, and, and so is the tongue among our members and defileth the whole body and set it on fire, even the whole course of nature is set ablaze with our tongue. I pray, God, that you would bridle your tongue in order for your destiny to be perfect. I know that tomorrow is glorious. Tomorrow is perfect. I know that tomorrow is going to be wonderful and glorious. I know that tomorrow is going to be amazing and successful. You can begin to project your future by the words of your mouth in order for you to see your tomorrow glorious and amazing, you need to start today to speak into tomorrow. God speak into the tomorrow of this earth and therefore we see the beauty and the glory and the glamour that the earth possesses, which other planets do not possess. Why God speak it on planet earth? This is where I want man to reside. This is how I want it to look like. And then began to project it by the words of his mouth. Let there be light. Let there be water. Let there be sun, let there be moon, let there be stars. Are you projecting into your future the sun, the moon, the light, the goodness, the favor, the amazing successes, the victory? Or are you negative and setting your own fire, your destiny ablaze? He says, so is the tongue among our member. It's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. He says, no man can tame the tongue. The tamed animals, serpents and birds and beasts and things under the sea but the tongue can no man tame. James said it's an unruly evil full of deadly poison. I pray God that God will circumcise your tongue with a coal of fire. That your tongue will be touched and purged from all those negativity and all those, all those you know, faithlessness that you proclaim, proclaim. And that your words will become words of life, words of healing. Jesus said, you shall have whatsoever you say. Let me close with the scriptures in Mark eleven twenty three. Jesus said, If you shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and you shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that those things which you speak shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. 
in verse 12, he then said, Whatsoever ye desire, when ye pray, believe, and ye shall receive. You shall have whatsoever you say. I pray God that what you will have will be a glorious tomorrow and that by your profession, your confession, your proclamation and your words with your tongue, your destiny will be glorious. You will eat the fruit of your labor. You will plant and you will eat. You will build and you will inhabit. You will labor and you will see the fruit of your labor. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you your own inheritance amongst them that are sanctified. Until next week, when the Holy Spirit will be opening our eyes to another vista of possibilities into the future, I believe, God, that He will bless and keep you and He will cause His face to shine upon you. Goodbye and enjoy this beautiful day as you start to profess your future, even today, that glorious tomorrow, that beautiful day, when you will accomplish all of your labors, you will begin to form and to see success in all ramifications. God bless you and stay strong. Goodbye.